ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय Shrimad Bhagavatam Canto 7 Chapter 9 Prahlad pacifies the Lord with prayers text number 3 without any purport so I'll just read the translation Thereafter Lord Brahma requested Prahlad Maharaj who was standing very near him My dear son Lord Narsingha Dev is extremely angry at your demoniac father please go forward and appease the Lord text 4 Tadhati शनकाय राजन महाभागवत और बका उपहित्या बुवि काये ना ननाम नानामा विद्रि तंजलि तेथे शनकाय राजन महाभागवतोर भका उपेत्य बुवि कायेना नानामा विद्रि तंजलाइलि फैति शरकाय राजन उपेत्या बुवि काये ना नाना तंजला महाभागवतोरभकाजलि एक्चुअली दिस नो पर्पोट टू दिस वर्स इधर सो आई एम जस्ट गोइंग रीड द ट्रांसलेशन एंड इफ यू लाइक यू कैन गो गेट अ बुक एंड सी द वर्ड फॉर वर्ड योर सेल्फ <laughs> Narada Kumar Muni continued. O king, although the exalted devotee Prahlad Maharaj was only a little boy, he accepted Lord Brahma's words. He gradually proceeded toward Lord Narsingha Dev and fell down to offer his respectful obeisances with folded hands. The whole idea of reading the the does anyone know why we read the trans the word for word? Yes. That's true. What are we supposed to be by the time we've got up to the second, seventh canto? Which would we have done already? At, by the time we've gotten up to the seventh canto, how many verses of the Shrimad Bhagavatam should we have remembered or memorized? Yeah, all of them. So who has remembered one hundredth of them? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hopefully, if I go back to Godhead, you'll come with me. <laughs> <laughs> the time of leaving the body, when the Yama, the Vishnu Dudas come and say, "So, what's your qualification?" I have no qualification, but the speaker memorized most of the verses, <laughs> and I was there when he was doing it. So. <laughs> No, we're actually supposed to learn these things, but because we're in Kali Yuga, we can't remember where we were yesterday. <laughs> Therefore, this idea of going too quickly or too slowly is not very good. Because, why? You know, just like these verses. Let's see, in this verse, Tata. I mean, we've probably heard that a million—well, not a million times, but at least a thousand times—we've heard that word. So, why is it that we don't remember these things? Does anyone know? Is it that we can't remember anything? We have such poor memories that even though we repeat something a thousand times, 
ta 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 <laughs> Why is it we don't remember it? And why aren't we focused? Why aren't we focused on it? What's that? Okay, I won't ask you what. <laughs> but why are we focused on something else? Yeah, that's just, we don't take it seriously. We think, well, so if I memorize it, it wouldn't make any difference in my life anyhow. I'd go around, hey, how are you doing? Tataz Shanakaraja. <laughs> I feel proud, actually, as I was pointing out, knowledge and perspective without conviction and without skill and character just makes one proud. And pride will actually degrade one. So if I'm proud, I know so many, I know so much, and I have realized, but we don't think I've realized so little. Therefore, we think, well, what's the sense of memorizing this? I'll just get proud. I can't use it. If I say it to someone, they'll run away. <laughs> Even the devotees run away. Hey, Prabhu, would you like to sit down and read Krishna book? We were read an hour. Forget it. <laughs> we had our daily dose. <laughs> or is my favorite. You can sit around and say, did you hear about so-and-so what he did? No, what happened? Well, it's, oh, my God, I can't believe it. <laughs> I thought it was going to happen. I told everyone it was going to happen. And then you, you go, well, would you like to read Krishna book? Oh, I don't have time, really. I got to really go. I'm sorry. You know, <laughs> I'm late, you know. But did you hear about so? No, no, what happened to so-and-so? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just tell me more. You know, my ears are growing. <laughs> Well, that happened. Okay. Would you like to just read five minutes? No, no, man. I, I'm really in a rush. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is too much. You know? I'm already late. <laughs> so we don't really think that these books are going to transform our lives in a positive way. That Therefore, we come to class and hopefully they tell some jokes to keep us awake. <laughs> And we get a special treat. They tell us a story. <laughs> and before I go to sleep, I remember the bedtime. I remember the story as a bedtime story, and go to sleep peacefully. <laughs> but there's, there's an, these books are supposed to transform our lives. There's, there are the means. What does it says in the Bhagavatam? Says a lot of things in the Bhagavatam. <laughs> but in, I'll give a little bit more specific. In the chapter, in the first canto of the Shemad Bhagavatam, chapter seven, where we have the uh, son of Drona Punish, I believe, chapter seven is son of Drona Punish. And then we have the story of Narada Muni telling Vyasadeva that the reason why you're not happy is because you haven't glorified Krishna enough. And then, then Vyasadeva doesn't think, well, who are you to tell me? <laughs> you know, I compiled all the Vedas. What did you do? How many books have you written? So, Narada Pancharata, big deal, you know. <laughs> Read my books and we'll discuss, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an incarnation, what about you? <laughs> no, he was submissively heard from his spiritual master, and then he followed instruction, and he sat down in meditation. Bhakti yoga in manasi, samyak pranihite male, paisha purusha puranam, maya maya tadapashrayam. So he sat in meditation, and then he saw Krishna. And on the backside of Krishna was Maya. So he saw both of them, and he realized Krishna fully was controlled of Maya. And then he also saw something else. What else did he see? Mm -hmm. 
No, that's Mother Jasoda. <laughs> <laughs> Really? <laughs> That's not included in the Bhagavatam. <laughs> no, it's Yas Samoita Jiva. So what does Mohita mean? Deluded. And Jiva? It's all the living entities, including ourselves, as being deluded. Yas Samoita Jiva. Atmakam tri gunatmakam. And they're suffering the threefold miseries. It's not that they're deluded and happy. They're deluded and suffering. Paropiamanyate Narta, and this is all due to their anarthas, their misconceptions. And therefore Kitam Prapitpajate. And therefore he, he he saw that they were suffering because of their misconceptions. So what did Srila Vyasadev do? He went back to sleep because he was, he was having a bad day. <laughs> what did he do? <laughs> yes. So, so what is that verse? Ananta. He is compiling the Bhagavatam, the next verse. Yeah, well, that's, that's the next verse. <laughs> yes, what is it? You have a verse book there or something? Yes. Yeah. Oh, no, say, say the Sanskrit too. It's, we're not. Yes, good. Yes, so so what is this book, Srimad Bhagavatam, meant to do? We just heard it. What's that? What is it? What's the purpose of the, his compiling the Srimad Bhagavatam? What are we supposed to, after hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, what is it supposed to improve or set us in the path of? No. No, no, that's not what it says there. Read it again. <laughs> Read it again out loud. The material miseries of the living entities are superfluous. They can be breaking super fer- superficial. Super fer- super superfluous. Su- su- superfluous. External. Superficial. Can be directly mitigated by the living part of the body of the earth. Yeah, so what is the Bhagavatam supposed to help us do? By what? By what? By what? How do we get linked with Krishna? Yeah, through the devotional service. And then the material miseries, if Krishna is pleased, they'll take them away if we're actually linked up in devotional service. So we're supposed to hear the Bhagavatam with the idea it's supposed to help us improve our devotional service every day, get free from our misconceptions, our narthas, our bad habits, whatever. And if it doesn't, ha- if it doesn't happen, then we're just, what are we, what are we doing? Wasting. <laughs> we're wasting time. <laughs> Hopefully we'll, we'll laugh a little bit. So our digest, <laughs> our digestive fluid will, will increase and we'll be able to eat more prashadam without any problem. Make some advancement that way. Yes. <laughs> Good program. <laughs> He's understood the philosophy. <laughs> it's planned to come back to the material world birth after birth. <laughs> now, so we should actually try to figure the speaker. A lot of times the speaker, well, I don't say sometimes the speaker, they read the verse and they have no idea what the verse is about themselves. And then they start going off on a tangent. And you wonder, you know, whether the, how is it connected with what you just read, or as if it didn't make any, it had no meaning. Well, we just the verse that was read. Now we have to go off in some tangent in order to 
makes a meaning of the class. But actually every verse, every word Prabhupada said has deep meaning. Every letter of the Bhagavatam. So we have to honor the Bhagavatam. We have to serve the Bhagavatam. Because that's what's given to us. What's the verse in the first canto also? Third chapter about Krishna leaving this planet? Ananda. Krishna Svadama Upagate. Now that Krishna has left. So it's, what is he le- with along with Jnana, Dharma, Japi, Saha, Kolo, Nashta, Tri Shamesha, Pranarako, Dunodita. So what's happened? Translation. This Bhagavad Purana is a brilliant summary in the just after the departure of Lord Krishna to his own abode. Yeah. So we're supposed to have at least theoretical faith that the Bhagavatam and Krishna are not different. As a matter of fact, and Krishna including his devotees or abodes, etc. Just by hearing, we can actually experience these things. We can meet Krishna, we can meet his devotees, we can enter into his abode, even in this lifetime, just by hearing the Bhagavatam. But there's a question, of course, if we experience that, even to a small degree, we'll have some faith. But if we don't have that faith, then we at least have to intellectually understand it and try, because without intellectually understanding it, we don't take it very seriously. We think, well, what should I do now? Should I read the Bhagavatam or take prasadam or go to sleep? Or the <laughs> We think, well, it's obvious. I should go to sleep. Maybe. We don't understand the value of chanting Hare Krishna. We don't understand the value of hearing Shemad Bhagavatam. We, de- we may not even understand the value of the deities. We're looking at the deities and thinking, Wow, they look nice today. As if yesterday they didn't look so nice. And they're looking at us and thinking, you know, when is he going to wake up? <laughs> it's been so long. He's just. <laughs> and the association of devotees, we think, you know, so I can tolerate them sometimes. <laughs> and then making the atmosphere spiritual. Well, it's as spiritual as I want it. <laughs> So this, the value of these things, we don't, because unless we, ex- for some previous lifetime activities, we actually had that experience, and therefore we're given that experience in this lifetime again, to take up where we left out, we may not appreciate how powerful these, these things are, how, what potential they have for freeing me from all miseries and bringing me to the land of bliss and knowledge, consciousness, forever. Still, we have to at least theoretically understand it. So although we're in the seventh canto, as advised, we shouldn't have gotten so far unless we had understood the first two cantos. But somehow or another, we're here <laughs> by some arrangement. And some half man, half lion has just ripped apart someone who's half the size of the universe. And his little son is offering him a garland and kind of offers some prayers. <laughs> We're thinking, wow, <laughs> this is almost unbelievable. But anyhow, let's go through it. They won't, I, they won't give me prashadam unless I come to the program, so <laughs> I'll have to tolerate. <laughs> so let me just read text five. When Lord Nishigadev saw the small boy, Prahlad Maharaj, prostrated at the soles of his lotus feet, he mo- became most ecstatic and affection toward his devotee. Raising Prahlad, the Lord placed his lotus hand on the boy's head because his head hand is always ready to create fearlessness, fearlessness in all his devotees. So what just happened? 
Chris is on the board, so it's easier. <laughs> so Lord Nishingade saw the little boy Prahlad, he was paying obeisances, and he became Lord Nishingade became ecstatic. Now the Krishna looks at the little boy and says, you know, my God, so what? <laughs> you know, what else can you do? <laughs> Anyone could fall down. Maybe you're just tired. Who knows? <laughs> no, he became ecstatic because uh, out of affection. Krishna also has is affectionate and becomes happy and ecstatic. So, and then the Lord plays his lotus hand on the, the boy's head in order to give him fearlessness. So Prahlad Maharaj, he was so exalted, he was a prema bhakti, he was able to tolerate so many inconceivable circumstances, being thrown underneath an elephant, being put into the extreme cold and extreme heat, being fed poison. So he must have been, he was a Mahabhagavad, he must have been on the topmost level, level to tolerate these things. But still, there's more to come. When Lord Nishingadeva just put his hand, Lord his hand on Prahlad Maharaj's head. It's not like Prahlad said, well, I'm, I'm there, I'm already self-realized. No. Thanks a lot for putting your hair on your head. Maybe I can shake your hand too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Nushingade. <laughs> <laughs> Purport. The necessity of the material world are four. The necessity of the material world. Ahara, Nidra, Baya, and Maituna, eating, sleeping, defending, and mating. This material world, everyone is in a fearful circum consciousness. Sada Samud Vigna Diyam. And the only means to make everyone fearless is Krishna consciousness. When Lord Nishingadeva appeared, all the devotees became fearless. The devotees' hope of becoming fearless is to chant the holy name of Lord Nishingadeva. Yato, Yato, Yami, Tato, Nishingha. Wherever we go, we must always think of Lord Nishingadev. Thus, there will be no fear for the devotee of the Lord. Here, Prabhupada says, the only hope is to chant the name of Lord Nishingadev. And of course, if you catch someone chanting Hare Krishna, tell them, Sir, you haven't read the Bhagavatam. You should be chanting Nishingadev's name. What's wrong with you? <laughs> You're in Maya. Why are you chanting Krishna's name? Nishingadev, Jai Nishinga, Jai Nishinga, Jai Jai Nishingadev. Chant, chant, chant. No, Prabhupada, Prabhupada has a lot of times in the Vedic literature, they make absolute statements for relative audience. Or they make absolute, sta absolute statements according to relative circumstances. So yes, it would be nice if we chanted Nishingadev all the time. But we can also chant Krishna's name all the time, which is not different from the Shingade. Matter of fact, it's better to chant Krishna's name. How many times do you have to chant the Shingade's, Lord Nishingadev's name to equal one chant of a Hare Krishna? 3,000, yes, 3,000. But anyhow, if you chant, we can't conceive of the potency of chanting one name of the Shingade. But to speak of th multiplying that at 3,000 times. So we chant in the days every day, every day, because to think of, you know, so if you're in difficulty and to think of Krishna playing with its coward boys, he's going to come and save you. <laughs> Krishna, help. Of course, sometimes that happens when the coward boys were surrounded by fire in the forest. Then they surrounded Krishna and asked him to help them with things that even Krishna, because Krishna is. The source of all protection. But generally speaking, that's not their usual mood because there's nothing to protect them from. So from <laughs> they're fearless. But sometimes with Krishna's pastimes, he arranges it. So there's some Leela with some demon coming or something. But most of the time, when the demons come, the coward boys join in the fight. But still, there's some mood. When, when Aristasur appeared, and so the gopis were embracing the tamal trees, asking for protection. Because that draws the devotees closer to Krishna. Krishna likes that. And the devotees like that too, and they, they're forced to take more shelter of Krishna. Out of love, of course. But these are past. So we can chant Nishingadev's name. There's, this is what we do. 
that's he's our protector. That's when Prabhupada was in Los Angeles, and there was some attempt to take over his position by some of his followers, 1970 about. And Prabhupada, after he formed the GBC, in order to take care of that, that unpleasant circumstances that were going on, then he sent around to all the temples, all, maybe there was 10 temples at the time, maybe a little bit more in America, a little piece of paper got sent around asking us to chant the Nishinga mantra, Namaste, Narishing, Haya. And actually we were told to chant it three times after Mangalarati. But obviously we don't take everything so seriously. But <laughs> So Prabhupada didn't think that just chant Hare Krishna. There's a mood of the, the reincarnations of Krishna that we can take shelter of, and we get they help us more. They, we get more of an effect by doing it because it's the appropriate mood. Shingadeva is the protector of Prahlad and his devotees, just like Krishna is Rasaraj. And we have others that we chant also that there's other deities and they have their their moods. And sometimes they're appropriate to chant, but we make things simple because we're not so sophisticated. And therefore we generally have the Hare Krishna mantra and we have the Nishingadev mantra. I don't think we have any other mantras that we chant, officially at least. Is there anything else? Okay, that's, that's enough. <laughs> so I'll stop there, thank you. Any questions? Oh, we have the Panchatatma mantra, which is probably is not different from the Hare Krishna mantra. Hmm. Uh, so, so you said Maharaj that they're they're doing it out of of love and that they were embracing the Tamal trees or something. But I catch myself many times this fear is here not doing because of love because obviously sometimes I do it things because I'm. I'm not scared, but this fear is, is present. So how to how to how to get more to the lo love inside of? <clears throat> Pray Krishna for more fear, so you can take shelter of him more. Oh, I'm not trying to love. Love for us means to do the service. That's love. Hmm. To try to invoke some feeling, the feelings will come. When Krishna is pleased with our service and he reveals himself in some way, then our natural love will come out. It's not that we, cause within our realm of knowledge and experience, we have a certain realm of consciousness under the modes of nature. And therefore, generally speaking, we should act in the mode of goodness, peacefully. And so when the agitating thoughts come to our mind, we should become aloof from them. We shouldn't take them so seriously. Instead, we should consciously start thinking about Krishna, which will Krishna will help us if that's what we want, and not become deviated by these, or influenced, or attracted by these thoughts flowing through our minds. So that we can do, come to the mode of goodness. And then performing service in the mode of goodness, then Krishna will reciprocate and reveal himself to us, hopefully. And then our natural emotions will, will be revived again. And they fully manifest themselves at the stage of Bhava. We make Krishna may give us some hint at every st at any stage. We can get a little bit of Bhava, but actual Bhava is a very advanced stage. But as it says, by these five powerful processes, by executing them with sincerity, even a neophyte devotee can experience Bhava. But that doesn't mean if we experience a little drop of Bhava, then now we're a pure devotee means that we've somehow or another by the mercy we've been given these five powerful processes and we try a little bit to concentrate our minds upon them and Krishna is pleased and he gave us some transcendental experience and that will inspire us to go on to get a little another drop or potentially half a cup or something thank you Master. 
Hey, they are. The fact is that as conditioned souls, we have absolutely no idea of what Krishna consciousness really is. <laughs> it's so far away from our experience. And even you come to some amazing experiences in Krishna consciousness, it's not even, you know, or as Prahlad Maharaj said, if the amount of happiness in Brahman was multiplied a hundred trillion times, and we don't even know what Brahman is, it went equal to an atomic fraction in one drop of the ocean of devotional service. So hopefully these things will make us a little bit interested in getting it, finding out what this is all actually all about. <laughs> Um, so how to come to a proper mood while reading Bhagavatam how can we at least theoretically sincerely accept its greatness well the first thing to do is read it that helps and then close the book after you read something and see if you can remember what you read if you can't remember what you just read then you haven't really read it. The book was there, your body was there, you were somewhere else. <laughs> so then go back and read it again. And what's the sign that we actually read it and heard it? We can remember it. We can't remember it. Then we haven't really paid attention to it. We haven't taken it seriously. The next thing we should do is visualize it to see what it's saying. Visualize in the sense to see what's actually being said there, not just we remember it. Parrot can also remember it. It doesn't mean it can see it. We have to see what is being said. See what's being said, see what's being said in relationship to other verses, and then try to see if it fits into my experience. What I have to do to follow this instruction, to make it part of my life. And then we have to apply it within our lives. Find out what I have to do and be convinced that I should apply this within my life and I should make it part, I should try it out and find out how it fits into my skill set. Specifically, what skill set? Well, that depends. It probably has something, we have four skill sets, really. There's only four things we have to apply. It makes things life easier. Do you know what they are? We only have four four fields of serving right now. The Bhagavatam is only for us, is only applicable in four different aspects of our uh, devotional life. Does anyone know what they are? Well, then you can find out something new. Not new, but there's only four things. One of them is how to love Krishna, Ishvara Prem. Second thing is how to serve and love the devotees. Prema Maitri, Maitri. And Kripa, how to give mercy to the innocent. Anupeksha, how to avoid the atheist, the Dritsatsu. That's the only thing that the Bhagavatam, we have to know, get from the Bhagavatam. So everything we read, to try, we should try to figure out how is this going to help me either love Krishna or serve the devotees, serve with the devotees to help the innocent and avoid the defeat or avoid the atheist. That's it. Simple. So we, with conviction, we're convinced of those things and we apply within our lives the skill, then we'll develop the character of a pure devotee. The character of a pure devotee is obtained by applying devotional service with conviction, steadiness, conviction, steadiness, and with enthusiasm. Which means under any circumstance, as it says in Bhagavad Gita, dukeshu vamanagmanak sukeshu vigata spriha vita raga bhaya kroda stita diramuni uchate. One who is not disturbed in spite of the threefold miseries, who is not elated when there is happiness, and is free from attachment, fear, and anger, is known as the sage of steady intelligence, steady mind. So, 
if we're undisturbed in any circumstance, then we've understood what the Bhagavatam by and undisturbed in any circumstance by being in Krishna consciousness in any circumstances. Not just superficially, but deeply in, in, in absorbed in Krishna consciousness. So that any circumstance doesn't shake me at all. Guru na pi vichalyate. When one actually meets Krishna, according to the Bhagavad Gita, sixth chapter, verse eight to twelve, when one meets Krishna, one is not disturbed in spite of the greatest difficulty. This is indeed freedom from all material miseries arising from material contact. So deep absorption in Krishna consciousness is means that we become we develop the character of a pure devotee. So read the Bhagavatam. We all have to read the Bhagavatam. Pay attention to it. Make sure we pay attention by seeing what we can remember. And then see it. Visualize it. Understand it. See it from different angles, different perspectives. Then apply it skillfully in those four different divisions of our, our intermediate practice of devotional service. Develop the character of a pure devotee so that and we know in any circumstance how to love Krishna, how to cooperate with the devotees, how to help the innocent, and how to avoid the atheists or defeat them. Then the Bhagavatam will actually be valuable for us. Okay, thank you very much. Grandaraj Srimad Bhagavatam Kijai, Srila Prabhupada Kijai, Gaur Pramananda. Thank you.